This is a Rogue Media Network podcast. Hey everyone, you're listening to The Public Affair with me, Andrew G. I see someone different every episode, but do me a favor, keep it between us. Hey guys, what's going on? It's me, Andrew G, and welcome to another exciting episode of The Public Affair. I've been wanting to have this guest on for a really, really long time, and like most of my other guests, I had to wait for the right time, and I felt like the time was right today, so we're super excited to have him here. Now listen, before we continue, I have to give everybody their props in the background uh, for producing this episode. We got Mason and Mike, Rogue Media Network. Thank you guys so much for all you do for me and the show. I truly, truly appreciate it. You guys work super hard on all my shows, and God damn it, it's going to be four years in a minute, and I don't know how to act. I feel like I'm going to have a four-year-old child. All right, so big shout out to all of you guys, and of course, to everybody that continues to show love and support to the public affair. I truly appreciate you guys. Please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Now, before we continue with my very, very special and exciting guest, I'm actually like intrigued to know what direction this episode is going to take. But you know what? That's the, the beauty of this show, right? Before we continue, I definitely want to use this opportunity to give a shout out to just a few of our sponsors of this episode of the public affair. This episode is brought to us by Davis on the Bunyans with Alinea Real Estate. He's the number one sales agent in his office. He's going to help you buy a home or sell your property. If you don't know what you're doing in the home buying process and you need some help, David's going to walk you through everything step by step. Follow him on Facebook at David with Alinea. Call him on the screen you say hablas español también to my boy David Santabanez keep doing your thing damn he's been sponsoring this show for more than two years and still the number one sales agent in his office good for you bro thank you so much for all you do for me in the show I truly appreciate it of course the Nika Armstrong with Armstrong's Bayou Cafe with serving the most authentic Cajun cuisine oh my god with a wide selection of signature crab cakes pasta seafood and more sounding like dinner it's serving dinner tonight now my favorite is any single pasta that she has on the menu you guys gotta go check her out at Union Hall on Franklin and Union Grove in Woodway you can also order online at um, Armstrong's Bayou Cafe Corporation.com thank you so much to Anika Armstrong for sponsoring this episode of The Public Affair to my very special guest, Mr. Manny Guerrero of Blue Star RV Services and Mobile RV Tech, who can fix all RVs. I'm talking about Travis Chase, Fifth Wheels, Toy Haulers, and so much more. He deals with the warranty company, so you don't have to deal with all that mess, all right? Pay him and his team his small little service fee. I'll <laughs> come out there and get you all taken care of, all right? Follow him on Facebook. Call the number on the screen of Blue Star RV Services. My boy, Manny Guerrero, thank you so much for sponsoring this episode of The Public Affair. Of course, the Tyler Hyde with CBD Plus USA, located at 2444 West Loop 320 in the Central Texas Marketplace in Waco. Listen. Enjoy high quality products with a wide range of top of the line CBD, THCA, Delta 8, Delta 9, and so much more. And if you guys are unsure how the product works and you're unsure if it's going to work for you, they'll educate you from start to finish. Check them out and discover the natural benefits of their premium products at CBD Plus USA. Thank you so much for sponsoring this episode of The Public Affair. And of course, I'm not going to go on without thanking uh, Soko Soccer Academy with Dominic Gutierrez and Ariana Gutierrez. Uh, Manny was just telling me that I, I look, you know, I'm serving coach today. Well, I, I, said, I said that to him. Okay, so <laughs> located at 3304 Franklin Avenue, they offer team, small group, and individual skills training and elite skills training to make your kids superb star athletes with professionals like George De Leon. They're also the most ideal daycare service in town. If your kids are out of school and you need something to do to keep them active and social, Soko Soccer Academy is definitely the place to do it. Also, huge, huge, huge shout out to the Soko Soccer teams, coached by my very good friend, Coach Mauro Maldonado. Keep doing your thing, bro. Keep you and the teams, the Soko Juniors, the Soko Divas, the Soko High School team, all of you guys are doing phenomenal and I'm just rooting for you. Thank you so much for letting me be a part of anything that has to do with Soko Soccer teams to Soko Soccer Academy. Thank you so much for sponsoring this episode of The Public Affair. All right, guys. Like I said, I've known this guy for a couple years, right? And he's the reason why a lot of y'all got money in your pockets when I'm doing them giveaways. <laughs> because he'll hit me up random, right? I don't know if he's drunk or whatever, but he's just like, hey, let's just give away money. And I'm like, sure. Yeah. <laughs> so, and so he's been doing that. He's been an avid sponsor of The Public Affair for a very long time. And he's an entrepreneur in his own right. I am so excited to finally welcome. Welcome, Mr. Manuel Guerrero here on The Public Affair, the owner of Blue Star RV Services. Yes, sir, I, I appreciate the opportunity to be no, here. Well, you know, we've talked about it quite a few times. Yeah, it's been, a, I don't, it's, it's been a little bit in the making. It's been sure. a scheduling conflict. Yeah. It was like sure. making a baby, except we didn't do the first part. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was gay. I told, I told my my, my uh, guests and my viewers I'm going to be less gay. But no, <laughs> no you know what? I, you know what? I, I know your dad. Yeah. Can we shout out to Ernesto? Yeah, I just talked to him on the way over here. I was uh, were, like, did you tell me you were going to be on the public? Yeah, I told him. I was like, you okay. can't tell nobody, but I'm on the way over there right now. Yeah, and what did he say? And he's like, uh, he was talking about, she's like, you make sure you tell him I said hi. And mm -hmm. you know how he's doing? I was like, yeah. I told him where I was coming here to the sure. other building. He's like, He's like, that's where you're going. I was like, yeah, I'm gonna be on the 21st floor. He's like, man, take pictures, you know. Oh, really? Yeah, he's, he like, said he, that. Yeah, he said he's wanted to shout out to you. I didn't know if your dad liked me or not. Me and your dad worked for a long time together, and I was kind of known as a bitch, <laughs> and I still am known as a bitch. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so I'm pretty sure he categorized me as such at one point or another. No, he did tell me this joke one time. <laughs> yeah, he said, me. uh, I guess somebody had some hot dogs or something, and you said something about the way he was eating, and I guess he got upset and threw it in the trash. <laughs> and I just laughed. <laughs> they were the ones that made jokes to him about me. I never came on to you, Dad. So <laughs> let's make that very clear, okay? Now, was he, like, one of the more eligible candidates? Probably. 
<laughs> at the time okay you know what i mean but no no big shout out to him and you know what and we met a lot through our peers as well i mean we we know a lot of the same yeah we people. know a lot of the same people yeah you're you're in the rv business yeah. um everybody that has watched the show knows that my full-time uh job is at an rv establishment yeah. where i am the wicked witch of the west i'm kidding <laughs> <laughs> so no no and so you know it, I, I really come to just like um, grow an appreciation for you as an entrepreneur, as a business owner, because, you, you know, we look at you. Uh, uh, part of the conversation that we had yesterday was that, you know, looks can be deceiving and yeah. people are quick to pass judgment on me because I'm all tattooed. All the, is that yeah. annoying to you? Uh, to be honest with you, most of the time when I meet these people, they don't realize that it's uh, the per I'm the person they're t speaking with on the phone. Okay. Uh, like I said, they just think, you know, oh, he's just another worker, you know. So, sure. you know, I got to let them know, hey. I usually don't say I, I'm not your typical owner, I guess, per se. Okay, uh, got you. You know, I'm somebody that still gets on my hands and knees and works. Sure, sure. Uh, so, like I said, so most of the time they think, oh, it's it's somebody else that they're speaking with. Okay, got you. Like but, some black suit and tie. Yeah, so, tie somebody guy. else that, uh, like I said, I, I've you know I've, I've done business with some people that I've never met for you know a long period of time. Yeah. And when I do meet them, they're like, oh, you're the person I've been you're speaking with. You're that guy. With. Okay, got you. I'm like, yeah, but like I said. It is because I'm young and I'm I'm I'm, I'm a dark skinned Mexican tattooed. So the yeah. first impression that you get from me is. Oh, you know, where, where you been locked up at? You know, where you uh, where you come from? Okay, from? yeah. Well, like I said, that's, uh, I, guess, I guess, just a stereotype. Like, you get stereotyped yeah. quite often. Yeah. And I'm not going to lie, you know, a lot of the times when I see you, you're looking very rough around the edges. Oh, yeah. I, I, had to get, I had to get a haircut to come here. Yeah, you look, this is the cleanest I've ever seen you. Yeah, yeah, usually I'm all dirty. <laughs> like, you really clean. I, I was, yeah. the, I'm not trying to sound mean. Well, you work your ass off. Yeah. You work your ass off. I think that's fair to say. You're booked oh, yeah. and busy, which is part of the reason why we've had such scheduling conflicts Okay, and so, but I was like, I wonder how he's gonna dress. Yeah. <laughs> and when you walked in the door, you're so radiant and glowing, and I'm yeah, like, oh uh, wow, this is different. Yeah, I had to get a uh, get a haircut. And like I said, I was like, I can't go in there looking rough. Usually, what I look like. <laughs> no, I got you, bro. Well, thank you again for coming. I'm really excited for the viewers to to kind of get to know you. I yeah. mean, you know, I would say that you're low key for the most part. Any time yeah. that I see you posting is Blue Star or Blue Star wants to give away money this weekend. Yeah. So, and and can I just real quick before we get to know who you are, um, just on a selfish standpoint, I really want to thank you for all the support that you've given the public affair you yeah. didn't know me from nowhere uh we had never we weren't that acquainted with each other when we talked about it and so you've done a lot for the show and i really just want to let you know how much i appreciate it and everything you've done for my viewers as well yeah for sure that. uh and to be honest with you it's it's the opportunity uh like i said we we do a lot of things like that but with your situation like i said once mm -hmm. i grew to know you as a person yeah uh it was like hey you know let's let's why not let's do it hey you know sure. give the money the giving the, away the money was like Hey, let's uh, let's put a smile on somebody's face. That's you know it. what I'm saying? And people love that. Yeah, you know, it's yeah. like uh, to be honest with you, this life is hard. Uh, yeah. So, like definitely. I said, when when you can brighten somebody's day, even if it's the smallest thing. Oh yeah. Yeah, it, it makes. Makes our day better, I, you know? I agree, and my my biggest giveaways are money. Yeah. Nobody wants the Six Flags tickets that I bought, no. right? Nobody wants the yeah. season passes that I bought that was one hundred and fifty dollars, right? Yeah. They want they want the cash. Okay, yeah. so no big shout out to you. Listen, okay, Manny, can you talk to us a little bit about your life growing up? What was your family dynamic like, and what were you like as a person, and where are you from, and all? That? Uh, well, I was born in Waco, okay, uh, but I was raised in a small country town. It's, it's probably about forty five minutes from here. It's uh, a town called Clifton, close to Lake Whitney. Uh, I know where it's, Clifton is. Yeah, it's it's a small town, like you know, pretty much everybody knows everybody. Everybody. Yeah, um, yeah. Like I said, my you know, our growing up, like I said, um, my, my parents were together. Sure. Uh, you know, I came from a loving home. Mm -hmm. Um, but my parents, you know, relationship, it was uh kind of kind of toxic. Yeah, know? okay. So, you know, once we got to a certain age, you know, they divorced. Okay. Uh and like I said, once they divorced, you know, they uh they kind of grew into their own. You know, like I said, uh them being separated as, you know, them finding themselves was better for them. Yeah, you know definitely what I'm saying? for sure. Uh, so us children, like I said, we like I said, we it was never a doubt that we weren't loved. It's okay. just them together, you know, they couldn't sure. love each other. Did you stay with mom or dad? Uh, I went with mom. You know, oh, you went with mom? Uh, yeah, okay. I, stayed, I stayed with my mom, uh, like my, my brothers and sisters. You know, we all grew mm -hmm. up with my mom. Uh, like I said, I've been, I've been always, you know, so we've always had a close relationship with my yeah. dad. Me, me especially, like I said, I've always had a real close relationship with my dad. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, yeah, he's quite the character. Isn't yeah, he? like I said, uh, <laughs> I like, can't imagine growing up in Ernesto's my dad. Yeah, like I said, he, 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 he's always pretty funny. Uh, yeah. So like I said, he's. Um, did he's you? Like said, he 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 he's he's a uh, yeah. I was gonna say, well, I don't know him to be a hard ass. No, usually yeah. he's like I said, as a, as a kid, mm -hmm. to be honest with you, like I said, us going like going out and having um going out with our friends, we really sure. couldn't do that. Like I said, my dad was oh. kind of strict. As oh, he a kid. was strict. Yeah, oh, okay. as a kid, you know what I'm saying. Like I said, and uh, he would keep us at home. Like we would do outing things, but like yeah, said, yeah. it was more of like a like a family thing. Okay, would you say that you were sheltered growing up? Uh, yeah. Probably. Okay, in Clif Okay, so I know where Clifton is. I've been yeah. to Clifton a hundred times, and actually, a lot of my guests are from Clifton as well. Yeah, like I said, it, yeah. I, I, we probably grew up pretty sheltered. Like I said, okay, we, gotcha. uh, 
one, my, one of my family was, you know, when they were married. Yeah, yeah. yeah but like once, once they, you know, separated, like I said, we kind of were able to do other things. Oh, do it, okay. As when we were growing up, we were more like involved in like family, family got you, things. Got you. Uh, like I said, when we would go places, it would be more like us, my mom and dad, the kids, you know, yeah, stuff like that. Most definitely, man. You know what? I, I and so. I always hear growing up in small towns like those kinds of Clifton, like Meridian, and all those. Stuff, I always hear that there's like lots of drug use and stuff like that. Is that true? Is that a stereotype as well? Because because there's nothing to do, so everybody starts experimenting. To, to be honest with yeah. you, those areas there is a lot of drug use, is especially there? Um, okay. like with the harder drugs. I mean, mm. you know, like marijuana is the stuff that's out there. But when it comes right. to like harder drugs, to be honest with you, the country towns where I'm from, you know, th th there is certain parts that are bad. See, so, and that's what was so baffling and confusing to me. So when people say that, I'm like, well, where the hell do you get it from? Because yeah, you live in the they, middle of nowhere. And so, they, uh, yeah, I wouldn't say that they make it out there, but you okay. know what I'm saying? they just, uh, they, they have their way. <laughs> hey, allegedly. Yeah. Okay. It's so out we, in the country. I don't want to get sued. All right. Yeah. I'm already getting demonetized. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I don't want, I don't want those problems. Yeah, right? It's just out in the country. So they find their ways. You Did know you find your ways to any of the, that lifestyle? To be honest point? with you, when I was young, like in my, mm -hmm. you know, I, I quit school, so... In, oh, you did? In, yeah, I, I, I didn't graduate. I got my GED okay. years after, but when I did quit school, to be honest with you, uh, like when my parents separated, uh, sure. I, I kind of did get involved with, you know, hard drugs. Okay, uh, okay. Like I said, it was real hard on my mom, mm. uh, but like I said, I was, you know, I was involved in things like that, doing yeah, hard drugs, and then finally, uh, I kind of got to a point where I ended up moving away from there, Yeah. and I moved uh, to Houston. I stayed out there for a few years with, with an uncle, Okay. Uh, like got a job, and then... Uh, I just put it down and never touched it again. Is that right? Yeah. Well, can we can we discuss some of the hard drugs? Like, yeah. 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 Okay. So uh, what, what like were said, you using? Well, to be honest with you, uh, like I said, I was young. All, mm -hmm. all my family, like I said, we were all close knit, so we ran around together. Yeah. Yeah. Um, a lot of my cousins, they were older, so like I said, they were doing you know meth. Mm. Um, I, you know, I, I got involved with you know crack. Right, uh, okay. I, did, I did it for a long period of time. Is that were you shooting? Up no, or I was, were you, I was you were smoking. just smoking. Okay, yeah, gotcha. I, I was okay. I was smoking it, uh, and I started at a real young age. Yeah, because uh, I was like sixteen when I when I first started touching sure, it, and sure. then I didn't stop until you know I was like eighteen years old. Oh wow! Uh, so once I got involved in it, it was real hard to put it down. Mm. Uh, and like I said, my mom she had a she had a real hard time with me. Like I said, because mm. at a young age I was kind of defiant. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So like I said, I wanted to kind of be out on my own dude yeah yeah think, you know thinking that i'm gonna uh well you were sheltered yeah for a whole minute and right? so like yeah, yeah I, I was sheltered from my parents so i think once i got got the opportunity to okay. to run wild I, yeah. you know, I, I i did you took it yeah did you did you ever with the drug use did you find yourself i mean because you mentioned it was only a couple years um so did you ever get like heavily um addicted where things kind of got bad maybe rehab got involved and stuff like no, that or? I, I probably should have um oh really there, okay there was times to where where, you know, I didn't have no money. And, the, you know, yeah. like I said, me, like I said, where I, how I was raised is, you know, like I said, we're a close-knit family. Yeah, man. So the first, the first you know, person that I would turn to is to my mom. Mm -hmm. And be like, hey, you know, I need money. You know, I, she knew that I was, you know, I was strung out. Sure, so sure. So she, she probably, you know, shouldn't have gave me the money, but I think because, she, you know, her love for me is like, hey. Were you taking advantage of her? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Like I said, I think because her love for me. Um, mm hmm you, you just knew that she could give it to you. Yeah, she knew that she could. I, I, I was in a hard spot, and I knew yes. if I turned to my mom, she, you know, she would, she would, she would be there. You she know what would saying? be there, yeah. So, but even, she was also supporting your habit as well. Yeah, yeah. Did she know that at the time? Yeah, she did. Yeah, okay. she did. And there was mm -hmm. times, you know, like a, we we would have a, like a conversation like yeah. this, where you know, where where I was staying, it wasn't you know the best neighborhood. Uh, yeah. Like I said, the drug dealer was you know two blocks, two, sure, two, two, sure. two blocks from my house. Right. So like I said, I would say, hey, you know, I, I would call my mom, hey, you know, I need money. Mm -hmm. uh, and she, you know, she would come. She lectured me, of course. Hey, hey, you know what you're doing is wrong. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. you know what are you? When are you going to stop? And, sure. You know, I, you know, I, what I, you know, when I, what I was doing, I just wasn't listening. Gotcha. I guess you would say. So, like I said, I, she would give me the money, and then I would, you know, go do whatever I was going to do and come gotcha. back. Gotcha. Gotcha. But you know, at a point at, there, at the end, she was like, "Hey, you know, you're gonna have to do something different." Okay, gotcha. Uh, because I would, you know, I would work all week, and then I have no money. Right. So, like I said, it was just getting to. So a point you were spending all your money. On yeah. like meth and yeah. crack and yeah. stuff like yeah. that. Pretty, okay, yeah. gotcha. Yeah, because like I said, I'd spend all my money. Um, mm. You know, back then, it's like I said, when I first quit school, I was man, I was roofing houses. Yeah, you yeah. Know what I'm saying I'd work me all day long to make a hundred. Is that bucks. why you quit school? Uh, man, to be honest, I quit school. What happened was I ended up getting a charge for like a marijuana charge in school. Oh, okay, gotcha. And they ended up kicking me out, wanting me to go to like an alternative school over there in Clifton. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was <laughs> like, uh, but back then in the day, they make you run. You know what I'm saying? Make yeah. you make you run miles. Uh, and I was like, you know what, man, I. Ain't you know, I ain't doing this shit. I'm, and so I'm you quit. just left. Yeah, so I'm quitting school. So you just left. Okay. So yeah, I, I, I left school, and then, yeah. uh, you know, of course, you, being young and dumb, I was like, hey, you know, I think I know everything. So like sure. I said, I, 
uh, one of my uncles, he has his own business. He took me on, you know what I'm saying? He was always putting me to work. And like I said, I'd, I'd work. But then, like I said, I had a, a real bad habit. For sure, yeah, yeah. So like how, I, Well, how bad did the, the circumstances of your habit create, like, in your environment? Like, did it affect your relationship with people and stuff like that? Or? Not not to that point. Like mm-hmm. I said, the only relationship that I could say that it, it put strain on was, like, with my with my mom. Uh, like, like, my, like, my dad, he kind of knew what I was doing. Mm. But me and my mom, you know, we've always had a closer relationship. Yeah. So she would, you know, hey, you know, she would, we'd call each other every day. And then, like I said, I was, I was young living on my own. You know, say because like I said, I was I, w- I was pretty defiant. So like sure, I said, sure, sure. like I said, I wanted to go do my own thing. And then yeah. once I got the opportunity, you know, I moved from home and got my own spot. And when I did, um, I didn't have any rules. So once yeah, like yeah. I said, once I didn't have any rules, like I said, it, you know, just went. That probably wasn't the best down. thing for you. Yeah. Yeah. yeah no, like I said, once, sure. yeah, went, once I went out on my own, like I said, it was just like a downward spiral. Yeah, I understand for sure. Okay, so then you you put it down after a couple of years. Well, you know, you moved, you mentioned you moved to Houston. Yeah. What I did, did it not get worse when you went to Houston? No, actually, uh, I left from here. Oh, mm. I left from Clifton. And yeah. My uncle, like I said, it, we, I went and worked on the boats on, down in the oil rigs down there on the down in Houston. Okay. Uh, as soon as as soon as I turned eighteen, like I said, and uh. The day that I left from there, I said, hey, I was going to put it down. And you did. And, and I left from there, and I never touched it again. Okay. And then I went to Houston, and like I said, I worked I worked there for many, many years. Uh, never touched it again. Uh, and then, like I said, my uncle left d- down there, and I stayed by myself for, you know, for a few years by myself. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, man, you know, I wasn't doing good by myself. You know, I was sure, sure. out drinking. Yeah. I was young. I was like 21 to 23. So yeah, I was yeah. Out, I was out. Living know, the life like what we all did when we were yeah, 21. Like I said, big, yeah, like big town. I, come, I came from a country town. So yeah. when I made it, you know, to a big city, I was like, oh, damn, this is so much this fun. Is, this is peak. <laughs> yeah, you know, so like I said, I was out running wild. Sure, and sure. then I eventually, I eventually made my way back. Okay. Did you, did you, um, oh, my God. Like, I, I just, I, I really enjoy talking about drugs with, with my, my guests, right? And so did you ever relapse? No, never. Like I said, okay. Um, Once you put it down, that was it. So it wasn't hard. Like you didn't go to like the withdrawals and all that. No, like I said, uh-huh. went with that. Actually, I, I put it down, and then on that, I never picked it back up. But mm-hmm. meth, I, I dabbled with throughout the years. Okay. Uh, but with like crack, I never touched it again. Okay, gotcha. And then, like I said, I mean, I, to be honest, like I, I've always smoked weed. Oh yeah. Uh, so like I said, I, I think I, all my guests smoke weed. Yeah, like I said, I, I never really <laughs> like look. Even though like most people are like, of course, stereotype. Oh, you know, people that smoke weed are they're lazy. Sure, sure, you, don't sure. work. you know. So like I said. That I didn't, but after you know some well, years, I didn't, I didn't touch it anymore. It's like I said, there's the difference between a person that smokes weed and then there's a pothead. Yeah, and there, there's a big difference. Yeah. So while I, I can understand the stereotype, I've learned throughout the years that there's people who um, smoke weed and it really affects them. Yeah, sometimes <laughs> up here, no, in most times, uh, and but the, no, no, you're right. And then there's people that just smoke weed, like you know, like oh, I've just had a long day. I'm just gonna yeah, smoke just one chill thing out. weed. Yeah, I don't ever smoke. But <laughs> you know, now, did you ever find yourself hanging out with the wrong crowd? Yeah, oh, were, were you were you like the ringleader? Or were you more the follower? I was a follower. To be you honest, you were a follower. Okay. Yeah, like I said, all my all my family were older than me, so mm-hmm. I was kind of just doing what they were doing. Sure, sure. Trying to trying to be cool. I got you. Okay, got. You. And then uh, we talked about some prison time. Yeah, like what I said, what was uh, going on with that? Yeah, to be honest with you, uh, I went to, I went to jail. Uh, I did a, a sixty day stay, it changed my life forever. To be oh, honest, oh really, with you. really, uh, it was right when my son was born. Uh, I, to be honest with you, I was being young and dumb, smoking weed. I ended up getting getting pulled over with it, mm-hmm. got put on probation, mm-hmm. thinking, oh, I don't have to listen to nobody. Kept kept doing it, you know, and uh, eventually they said, hey, you know, you, you're bullshitting with the wrong people. We're gonna sure, take sure. you to jail. So I went to jail, uh, set my time out, and like I said, my son was just born so when i when i was able to see him you know mm-hmm. he was a little baby yeah, yeah so like i said i felt like i was missing you know missing out on a bunch of shit so yeah. finally i said when i got when i did get out that's right before you know i took the rv job um uh-huh. at the town you know so i went over there and uh um, you can give him a shout out yeah uh well, of course you know, fun, fun town you know <laughs> you can give sh- yeah uh, like i said I, I got out of jail and you it was can like name said, businesses uh i got out of jail <laughs> and like i said I, I took a job with fun town man and that's sure, what sure. gave me the opportunity to pretty much start working on rvs okay got you yeah okay so yeah like i said you're you're a renowned you know you own your own business you do your own rv sales and stuff not sales excuse me um repairs right which is and you do food trucks and stuff like that yeah too. we work yeah. on we work on food pretty much anything right. uh motor drivables food trucks yeah uh, you know, a lot of well, where we're from, there's a lot of there's a lot of uh, country people. You know, so they got yeah, like yeah. livestock trailers. We oh. put, yeah, we put ACs on livestock trailers oh, for the sheep and that. cows. Yeah, really? Yeah, we do. They need AC. I know. Yeah, some people like <laughs> uh, they go to those shows. They're pretty expensive. Sure, right? sure. Show, like uh, sheep and cattle yeah. and stuff. So they don't. They, they yeah. don't cows to die. Hey, let's backpedal a little bit. I, I, you know, you did the 60 day jail stay. Uh, you know, you were in and out of drugs. Yeah. Meth no more. Nope. No Never more. Okay. How long has that been? It's been some years. To be yeah. honest with you, it's probably been. 
oh, I don't know, 10 years plus. Now it's just like weed, cigarettes, yeah, just, Budweiser's. It, yeah. uh, to be honest, dude, <laughs> weed, cigarettes. Yeah, I, I, I did quit drinking beer for a long time when I when I left from. Yeah, that's why I didn't ask you. I didn't know if you were drinking or not. Yeah. I, yeah, so that's why I didn't ask you if you yeah, wanted actually, beer. I, 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 I started drinking again here recently, kind of light, though. But before, yeah. right before we, you know, right before we started this full time. I was a heavy drinker. Sure, sure. Uh, when I was, you know, when I was working late at night, going to the, you know, calls, yeah. getting home late, I was just drinking. You You're know, just, just drinking. Trying yeah. to, trying to like, I guess, de-escalate. You know, just sure, trying to chill. Sure. Did um, any of this ever affect your now family? I mean, you have a, a wife and kid, right? Yeah, I got, yeah. Well, I have, well, I have a few children. Uh, okay. I got an older daughter. She's eight. And I got my son. Um, he's he, he's seven. Mm -hmm. I got my my youngest son. Um, he's four, and I got a daughter that's three. Oh, I didn't know you had all uh, those kids. Yeah. Um, okay. Like I said. Uh, to be honest with you, this business that I'm in, it it, it does put a strain on family life just because yes. it requires me to be gone. Yes. And then when I am home, you know, I'm either attached to my phone uh -huh. or I have to be working on a computer to a certain extent. You're tired, so yeah. yeah, so I try to try to make things, but it is it does yeah. strain on my children though. But but none of like the other decisions that you have ever made in your life. I mean, well, I guess your oldest daughter is eight, so if it's been more than ten years that you were doing okay. Well, well my my oldest daughter, it's. Uh, I say that she's my daughter, but it's my daughter that I have with my now girlfriend slash wife. Oh, you know? I see, I see. Uh, my son, like I said, the time I put meth and crack down is right before my son was born. He was born, okay. Uh, gotcha. So, like I said, I didn't. Uh, I when, like I said, when I went to jail, I was you know pretty much still being a follower, running around with my cousins, thinking. Like I said, we come from a tight knit family, so when I when I say a family bond, we re ran around together. Yeah, Even yeah. though I might have been twelve and they might have been sixteen, seventeen. We ran together. Do you ever feel like, you know, as a dad, you know, it's hard. I mean, with four children that you're yeah. raising, do you ever get scared that they might fall down the same path? Yeah. Uh, and like, what do you do to, like, to be, To be honest with you, I try to tell my kids, like I said, I, I try to be open with them. So, like mm -hmm. I said, when they ask me something of, of my past, or I'll be honest. Mm -hmm. You know, like I, I tell them the truth. But it does make me worry because, like I so said, even my my son now and my sister, you know, all our kids, we, we, we raise them together. Oh, okay. You know what I'm saying? So, like I so said, we're still a tight-knit, you know, a tight-knit family. Uh, but it does worry me. But like I said, I just try to, you know, be be honest and say, hey, yeah. you know, I, I've been there. You know what I'm saying? Even though, you know, some parents might try to you know, make it I feel like a lot of parents sugarcoat. Yeah, they make, yeah. they make it cloudy. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like I said, my kids are at an age where if they look at me and, you know, ask me something honestly, I'm going to be honest. Yeah. Just because I don't want ever want it to come out later on to be like, hey, you, you know, you lied about something. Or they something, find out somebody, somebody else. Yeah. People are messy like that. Yeah, like, like I said, um, like so like yeah. I said even, to, even my son, like I said, he might ask me, you know, things about, because like I said, None of, well, besides my daughter, like I said, all my yeah. other kids, you know, they have different moms. Yeah. So, like I said, even when they, you know, they ask me certain things, I, I'm honest with them. You know, like they say, hey, you know, my mom said this. Yeah. But, you know, that, you know, that's true. If it, you know, if it's true. So I'd be like, hey, you know, I don't ever want to try to try to try to make me seem better than if I'm not. I, I got you. And you know what's so cute? I'm just going to point this out before we go to break. I, I don't think I've ever heard somebody say, like I said, so many times. <laughs> Do you realize that you say <laughs> <laughs> it's just, it's, I was just thinking about it. I was like, "That's cute." <laughs> no, it's cool, man. Listen, I am so excited. Okay, so you're you're, you're an entrepreneur in your own yeah. right. You know, you worked for the man for a long time, yeah. and now you're your business owner. And you know, I think it's so cool. And one of the things that I like about having guests like you on the show is that you know, you I bet ten years ago when you were on, you know, the drugs and you yeah. were. And, and no, I never would. I think I'd be here. Nobody, well, nobody would have, yeah. right? Not even yourself. No, to be honest with you, like I said, yeah. where I come from, most people know, you know, our name, our family name, know, yes. know us. So, like yeah. I said, for me to be where I'm at now compared to where I came from, I would have never thought I'd be here. Yeah, that's that's so wild. And so I want to get more into that in just a second. And then just quick side note, um, I did um, used to have a side piece in Clifton. That was great. He drove <laughs> all the way to my house right from Clifton. <laughs> that's, hey, that's at least 45 minutes right there. <laughs> Says a lot, doesn't it? <laughs> well, Manny, listen, I, I, you guys, we're going to get more with Manny Guerrero here in just a second with Blue Star RV Services. I want to know about, you know, you you starting the business, the jump to do so, um, the people that you got working for you, yeah. building the team, because, every, you know, sometimes your friends working for you is not the best thing, but maybe in your case it's different. So you guys, we're going to have more with Manny Guerrero with uh, Blue Star RV Services. <laughs> you got me stuttering. <laughs> Back on the public affairs, make sure you guys stay tuned. Here we go. It's that captivating smile that he has. That it just, it's, it's, it's alluring. I'm not, it's, I'm not trying to be gay. I'm being for real. Like, it's just, now I know why he has four kids. But anyway, <laughs> listen, you guys, before we continue this exciting episode of The Public Affair with my very special guest, Manny Guerrero, Blue Star RV Services, I definitely want to use this opportunity to give a shout out to just a few more of our sponsors of this episode of The Public Affair. This episode is brought to us by Julian and Abanda with Bandas Hauling Services. Red dump trailers, this right. You fill it up and they're going to haul it away. They also do junk removals and tree brush removals and haul cars in and out of town. If the car breaks down, the truck breaks down, or anything, Bandas Hauling Services is going to come and they got you. They also offer for 
roll off dumpster services as well. You guys like to have those big parties. You guys don't know what to do with all the trash. Just run a dumpster with them, all right? Book now with the number on the screen. They're the, the ideal number to have in your phone in case a sticky situation arises. They're literally going to pull you out. But that's all the service. Thank you so much for sponsoring this episode of The Public Affair. Of course, to Ossier Penguin Benitez with Fun Town RV. The best at RV sales. Penguin works overtime, overtime, overtime to make sure you and your family are situated and settled in an RV suited for you all. Toy haulers, travel trailers, fifth wheels, and so much more. Isaiah Blas Manuel, he's going to make sure you guys get the best deal. And listen, spring and summertime is coming up and it's getting hot. It's camping season. You guys want the best RV? Hit up my boy, Ossier Penguin Benitez. Follow on Facebook at Penguin's Cool RV Deals and Tips and make sure you guys get the RV of your dreams. That Ossier, thank you so much for sponsoring this episode of The Public Affair. Of course, our Fernando de la Rosa with Big Bear Lawn Care. He's a small landscaping business. It's getting hot and nobody wants to go cut the grass. Hit up my boy, Big Bear Lawn Care. Listen, and I already know the lawns are a hot mess, all right? He's going to get you taken care of mowing, edging, mulching, and so much more. Call the number on the screen to book for a free quote. Fernando de la Rosa, thank you so much for sponsoring this episode of The Public Affair with Big Bear Lawn Care. Of course, the track of post photography, my girl Myra Rosales, a digital photo booth business perfect for parties, private events, corporate events, and so much more. It's fun, it's convenient, it's EV easy. She's also offering digital customized invitations and movement for us. Call now and book with the number on the screen. Follow on Facebook at Striker Post Photography. And she's also doing videography for sports clothes. You guys just got to go ahead. She's doing her thing. Maya Rosada, thank you so much for sponsoring this episode of The Public Affair. And I, I just have to give an honorable mention to my boy Alonso Flores with World Stretch Therapy, a mobile stretch therapy and massaging. 100% certified and professional. He came to my house. He came to my house. I've seen those pictures. Uh, yeah, he did. But everybody was thinking of things. <laughs> I'm athletic. And so he, was, he was stretching you out. I saw it. Isn't it great? No, no. If you need a good Stretch, Manny. I'm telling you. Well, I'm, I'm gonna have to. Yeah, I seen. He, I seen. He, he was putting in work. He got the hands. <laughs> Literally, he got them hands. Okay, right? perfect for athletes or anyone who just feels tight and needs to loosen up. He comes to you, gets your body right and feeling perfect, 100 certified and professional. I will say that absolutely. Follow on social media. Call the number on the screen to book. Isabel Espanol también to my boy Alonso Flores. World Stretch Therapy. Thank you so much for stretching me out the other day. I really needed that shit. <laughs> he kept saying. He kept saying that I was tight. He goes, no, saying, let me stretch you out. No, he did. Every time, every, everything, he was like, you just need to relax. And I'm, I'm not a relaxing person. I don't know. I wish I could. I, 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 I don't know. I, I guess I've never had a massage. So I guess I kind of be kind of tense Have you never first. had a massage? Yeah. Never before. So I guess I kind of be tense at first. Yeah. But if your body's tense, it might, you know. Might do you think that it would, do you think you would feel weird if a, a man was touching you? But it's professional. No. Nah, like if I'm going yeah. to get a massage, it's just a massage. You know what I'm saying? No, that's what I'm saying. But, I, but no, because when I do get a massage, I only want a man touching me. I You're know that's is that weird. No, that no. that's weird though, right? Like, because uh, I had a girl. Do you feel for, is it because he's like more rougher? I, yeah, because they have like stronger hands. No, that's a stereotype though, and we talked about stereotypes. Yes. Because I did have a woman massage me once, and and she she had them hands too. You know, I guess was that the only woman that you liked to that she Yeah, did? but I did it because I fucked my back up once <laughs> and I thought a massage was gonna heal it and it did not. But um she did. She did get she's in Hewitt. I, I wish I could remember the name of the um the place, but she's over there in Hewitt behind chopsticks. Okay, and she actually does really, really good massages. So a big shout out to her as well. But I, I'm weird. I only I don't like when girls touch me. I don't know if that has to do with maybe, being gay. Maybe it's just a personal thing. It, it is. They're just so soft and like delicate. Maybe they're just not gonna touch you the way you want to be touched. <laughs> How, <laughs> about <laughs> How about that? How about that? Anyway, <laughs> well, listen. Okay, you guys, welcome my guest, Manny Guerrero, Blue Star RV Service. Thank you so much for being here. That was cute. <laughs> He's a woman. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You know what, Manny? Um, we talked about stereotypes earlier yeah. in the episode. Okay, and so um. We, we, you know, people look at you, they see you, you, he's wearing long sleeves, that bitch, but you're all (laughs) tattooed all up, right? And just, you you know, a lot of times you look grubby or whatever the case is, but you know, you work outside and it's a lot of outside hands, the hard labor. Yeah. For the most Uh, part. I would say just uh, laying on the ground, shit like that. You're going to get dirty. But But for the most part, when you think of boss... Mm-hmm. They don't think they're going to see somebody crawling their ass down on the ground. Right, you know right. Well, so that's what they think that probably. Well, and a lot of bosses, you know, don't. You know, yeah. when people look at leadership or when they look at bosses, they're like, yeah. you're the you're the commander. You know yeah. what I mean? And so do, does being stereotyped and maybe looking the way you do or maybe having a past, has that ever affected your business? Uh, to be honest with you, not really. Okay. Uh, most of the time, the time that they meet me and mm-hmm. they've already got their job and they got a smile on their face, they're just, oh, that you're the person that I've been talking to, but... Before then, like I said, they don't ever see. Most of the time, they're just thinking, "Oh, they're just they're just workers." Yeah. You know, so, like yeah, I said, once sure. I, we, you know, we the final job's done. Hey, you know, I hope you're happy. Come look at everything. Yeah. And then they realize, they're like, "Oh, you know," you can kind of see that they're shocked a little bit. Okay, but, got you. But like, I, I, I wouldn't. I would, yeah, I wouldn't yeah. say that. I think. Um, if maybe if they knew before, maybe they would be uh, maybe more leery. Maybe okay, got you. So, like I said, I, I would say, but it has, but it's never affected the business. I either. love your vocabulary terms. 
You have an extensive vocabulary, don't you? Oh, uh, to be honest with you, I, I had to. At first, I didn't used to. Yeah. Like I said, I, then I got into a spot where I took a job to be kind of like a boss to yeah. start a bit, start a service department for them. Yeah. And I kind of learned how to where I had to talk to people. For sure. So for sure. the way I talked and carried myself changed. Yeah. Yeah. You, like, you just you learn different yeah, oh, yeah, styles of speaking yeah. and how, who to talk to and how to talk yeah, to them. Yeah, how to talk yeah, to them. Yeah. For sure. I have an extensive vocabulary, too. Shout out to my friend Mar. He gets so mad at me <laughs> when I use big words. And then I, at work, I use big words to piss people off. Get on their nerves. <laughs> Jessica. Shout out to Jessica. Oh, she's, yeah, actually, Jessica. she's my boss in my regular job. She says I'm the most professional bitch she's ever met in her life. I've known, I've known <laughs> her for years. Isn't she great? Yeah, she's cool. Yeah, big, big shout out to her. Yeah. Okay, so you worked for the man for a long time. Yeah, okay. I, I worked for the man for a long time. And so when did you decide that you were just going to go into business for yourself? Uh, to be honest with you, like mm-hmm. I said, it's um, the, when we started this business, it was, uh, it was, it was in 2019. I oh, believe. okay. No, so, no, it was before then, actually. Yeah. Uh, it was in, because the, the business, Blue Star, has been open for uh, for five years. Okay, Running gotcha. five years. Three, we've been doing it for three years. Next month will be three years full-time. Full-time, okay. Full-time. Gotcha. Um, so, like I said, we... Uh, like I said, I've always had a, a full time job where you know we work for the man. Um, yeah, for sure. And like I said, we got to a spot to where we were able to do insurance. Mm. And then like I said, once we got tied into insurance, we were getting so backed up. You know, like I said, we were doing most of the time we were doing work. Sure. It started off pretty much trying to make another income. Got gotcha. you. You know, us trying to make you know hustle, make another side money like besides side money, yeah. working forty hours, and you know you don't make no good checks. So you're trying to do what your skill set is at. Yeah. Uh, like I said, doing something else. So like I said, once right. we, we were doing that for a while, and then like I said, once we came up with a name, mm-hmm. my uh, my mom's husband, uh, his name's Jason. You've met him before. Have I? Uh, yeah, he came up there and got some parts from me. Oh. You, you talked about him, remember? Did I? You did. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <That> <laughs> I one. do. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yes. And he, you uh, told me that was your stepdad. Yeah. yeah. Like yeah, I said, okay. he was... Uh, <laughs> I forgot about that, bitch. I, I did forget about that. I know. I seen your look like. Oh, yeah. uh, just okay. Just to put some context in it. Uh, you, you, again, I have a full time job at an RV dealership, and um, you know that's how he's referencing that. Okay, <laughs> so, and so uh, just to put some context, because yeah. everybody's like, "What the fuck are you talking about?" Like, okay, yeah. Like I said, he uh, he he. We we were working a full time job. Sure, and then, sure. Like I said, he was pretty much running calls throughout the day. So he pretty much he he you know he he got it to where we were able to we had a job, but he was out doing calls. Got you. Okay, got you. Okay, so so you're doing that, and then you're just like, okay, now we can start making the big money on our yeah. work because okay, so so you work on RVs, Blue Star mm-hmm. RV. You know, for anybody watching, you guys work on RV. So all of the people that are watching this that own like. Um, RVs, you know, yeah, pretty, to go camping like said, with uh, old ones, new ones, like yeah. I said, brand, you know, brand spanking new ones. I'm, sure, I'm, we, all of them. yeah, we've gotten tied into pretty much every dealer out there. Right. Okay. And so, you know, when you say the side hustle a moment ago, a lot of times or a lot of what people do, and um, which is I completely would do it if I had the skill set to absolutely yeah. do it, is go work on them on the side. Yeah. Because a lot of people they cannot transport their RVs. Yeah. And so what you do as a mobile RV technician is you and your team actually go to the people. Yeah, we so go to their not, house or wherever it's yeah. located. Yeah. Uh, and you guys go everywhere. Yeah. We've uh, the farthest yeah. we've been is almost into Me- to New Mexico. We've yeah, been see? into uh, lots of times like West Texas. We've been out there a few times. Like, right, so we, right. go, we go pretty far. So you possess the skills to go and, you know, I, I guess it's om- I-, I like to um, kind of like umbrella it like like a mechanic. Pretty much. That's Pretty much, is, right? Yeah. So you guys are like mobile mechanics and mobile technicians, yeah. right? And so it's super convenient for those types of people. But then I guess are, do you have to have a specific certification? Like you mentioned that, oh, I can get paid directly by insurance and like warranty. Like uh, yeah, off camera, you mentioned Forest River. Yeah, we which is uh, a big, yeah, yeah we got uh, well, we ended up getting it. it. Took a long time to be honest with you. Sure. Uh, that that company uh, they check into your background. Uh, they, oh, okay. they look at you know oh, rev- customer reviews. Okay. Uh, what what kind of business you run? So it, it took yeah. us pretty much almost a year and a half for me to be able to do Forest River by myself. Oh, I see. Uh, before I would have to contact them and then kind of send them the information and then we went that route. Now we got into a, a point to where pretty much I have their open portal. So now I just, you know, I'm able to file somebody's claim and get their parts and all that good stuff. Sure, sure. Myself. Okay. When you said that they check your background, did some uh, of your past come up? Or? Uh, what they're checking for, no, they're pretty much checking for what kind of work you do. It, oh, it's it, like work stuff. Yes. What oh. they're doing is, like I said, they, God, yeah, they were, they were, what they were looking into is uh-huh. pretty much if you... If you're an honest business, yeah, yeah, uh, pretty much. Like I said, they looked into the, you know, well, look into our, in, into our Google. Into yeah, go ahead. Yeah. So like I said, they looked into the sure. to the Google to the Facebook. Yeah. Uh, like I said, we you know we run a lot on Facebook, and they they look into that to make sure you know. the work that you're doing is honest because yeah, like you're not scamming. Not, yeah, there's some people mm-hmm. that you know do shady work, and to oh, be honest, yeah, with you, mo- sure. the people that we come across sometimes. You know, they've already came across somebody shady. Yeah. So when we they meet us, they're like they're kind of hesitant. Like, sure. You know, so like, hey, you know, 
we have to kind of explain how how we operate. Absolutely, a hundred percent. Now you know you we. I heard you off camera talking to my producer Mike about building your team, and you mm -hmm. mentioned that it's a lot of family and it's a lot of friends yep. that you knew, right? And so in a lot of cases, doing business like I couldn't do the public affair partnered with my two best friends, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, because we, we they're not it's not the same. Sometimes, sometimes you bump heads. Yeah, well, you would bump heads, and so, I do feel like it, it affects relationships sometimes. But then at the same time, like they're not podcasters, oh, yeah. right? Uh, and so it, it, it does. Like I said, right. to be honest, like I said, we're all close knit family. Like I said, my one of my co my co owner, he, he's he's my sister's husband, but I've known him since kindergarten. So, oh, really? Yeah. Okay. So like I said, we've been best friends for. But like having your friends, cause, so a lot of the team is like people that you knew uh, working in the business. Yeah, and like stuff so a like lot that. of the people I've mm -hmm. known in the business. Majority of them are family, but a lot of the people okay. that we came across is you know guys that I've known for ten years. Like I said, I've been in this business sure, for sure. ten years. Have you ever had a friend or somebody come work for you, and then they thought that they it was just gonna be like cake, and then you know kind of uh, take advantage and stuff to, like to, that? To be honest with you, no, not really. No, really. Uh, okay, so you lucked out. Once, to be <laughs> honest with you, once I discuss pay, mm. I, I think that puts a smile on their face. Uh, oh, okay. Like I said, in this, me being a boss, uh, like I said, I've worked for a lot of different corporations in in the RV business. And they don't ever pay you what you're worth. Mm. And the way I see things, is the, the people that you know work for Blue Star, the people that I've known these people for a long period of time, so I I've seen the things that they do. Sure. So I, you know I, I give them all all my trust. So does it make you feel good that you created almost a a job for your loved ones? Is what it yeah. sounds like. Yeah. To uh, live like, off of. Yeah, like I said. Yeah. To be honest, me, us starting this business, my mom she don't work anymore. She ain't, she oh, really? Ain't, she ain't worked for five years. Oh, wow. Uh, Can so I be like, your mom? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like I said, she uh, she answers my phones, and yeah. she's always on my ass. You know, or maybe, I, could be, sure. I could be your daddy, too. There you go. <laughs> I just I don't want to work, Nanny. That's the thing. Okay? I don't want to work. <laughs> I've been doing the public affair for four years. I still got to work. Shout out. There's no money in podcasting if anybody wants to know. Okay? <laughs> Zero. <laughs> okay. But no, no. Okay. So, so really, you never had a really a, an issue with... No, um, no to be honest okay. with you, like I said... The, the people that we you know that we've brought in sure uh, like i said we've known them forever so like i said we've we've built a trust okay i got you that and that's phenomenal you know what earlier you mentioned um you know a lot of shady business owners and stuff like that i feel for y'all when it comes to i mean i i have contractors that sponsor the public affair I have friends that are in contracting that's not the same thing blue star or, or like what you do is not Con you don't do contracts. Uh, not not really. Okay. Uh, like I said, I guess it would be like an open bid. Okay. Uh, like I said, we go out there, you know, tell them, give them an estimate, and Does you know, some 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 cost. sometimes yeah. you know, the customer, you know, whatever dealer that they have their camper, they bought their camper with, mm -hmm. you know, they might not like it that it's been there. So okay, okay. you know, they'll go pick up their unit and say, hey, I need my, I need it fixed. Okay, uh, got you. So have you ever? Do you have any client nightmares? So like, uh, like I was saying earlier, you know, I feel like it only takes one time for somebody to post that you were either a shady or a scammer, and it could be just be based off of like, you know, um, I didn't like the way the job came out. Two, uh, I've had you've two. had two. I've had oh, two okay. since I started this business. I got sued one time and we won in court. Oh shit, for real? Yeah. Uh, what Did you happened? have a big party with your settlement? Oh yeah, I was happy. Uh, <laughs> well, well, to be honest with you, I didn't sue him for anything. Oh, the okay. only thing I. What happened was uh, we ended up doing a job for a customer, uh, mm. and luckily after that job we changed the way we operate. Sure, sure. But it was uh, I gave the uh, the opportunity for the customer to buy their own part. Okay. And after I gave them a price for the correct part, you know they wanted to buy something like off Amazon. Oh, I see. Something that's you know you can that's a certain price <laughs> at a you know at, at, a, at a at a retail place and they yeah. might get it for two hundred. Sure, sure. And it not be the exact thing. And that's and that's what it was. I don't know. Um, I ordered my parts from Amazon. <laughs> okay. So like I said, that's what it was. And we, we end up we end up going to court for it. And, oh um, wow! And then like I said, well, we end up fighting it out in court, and well, like I said, we we won. Okay, that's great. Yeah. But so you never had to been like publicly dragged on social media or nothing like that. And to be honest, mm. we, we stand we stand by our work. So like okay, I said, right. if, if I do something, and it's in within the the warranty that I give the customer. Sure. If it breaks or whatever fails. One of my guys will be there to fix it. Outside of the court situation, were you ever accused of scamming somebody? Uh, never, never before. Mm -hmm. uh, we've we've had some customers where, like, there's one customer that you know left a bad review on Facebook, but she was she was an elderly, so like I said, we try not to argue with nobody. Yeah. So like I said, I just try to try to tell our story and then leave it at that. Isn't it really hard not responding? To be honest with you, yeah. Uh, like I'd be, I be wanting to like tear some bitches. Especially, up like I said, especially <laughs> when somebody's in the wrong. Like I said, we just we just had somebody the other day. Uh, where I had a technician go out there and do a repair, and mm. they they said that we never went out there. Oh, okay. And then you know we have because I make all my technicians take pictures. Oh, okay. Gotcha. So I know that they were there, and, they were the, there and the job right. was done. Sure. Uh, and you know after like I said we we didn't, I wouldn't say that we had a heated argument. I just you know we just said, hey, you know I'm not gonna argue. You don't have to pay. We just won't service you anymore. That's it. Yeah. 
Oh, but that doesn't put you out of money? Mm. Well, to be honest with you... Uh, like, I when mean, it comes to something like that, well, it's your livelihood we're talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah, yeah it, it does. Uh, right. But like I said, I'm not going to call somebody a liar. And so, like I said, I, I try not to argue with nobody. Okay. So it, it, point, it paints my business, uh, you know... Uh, yeah, well, I, and that's the hardest part about us as yeah. entrepreneurs is that, you know... It, I, and I tell I, I talk about this all the time. I really do because I I actually know somebody who was just going through it on social media and they they were just getting dragged. But uh, you, you can't respond no. because it's like that's what they want. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then it, it does it like if, so. If you were fighting with the person, and it just takes the, the wrong person to read it, and then it n- does not then know the story. All they think about Blue Star RV is that oh he just fights with everybody. Yeah. He just and it's not that you're a mobile RV technician anymore, yeah. right? And that's why. Yeah, half you bitches are lucky that I have the public affair. <laughs> because I would have taken bitches out years ago, believe yeah, me. <laughs> okay. yeah, some, sometimes you yeah. just gotta you know, stay quiet. You sometimes. just have to you just have to yeah. yeah. Like, Especially in, like, in, in customer service. We well, for the majority we come across happy people, you know, but sometimes you do come across people that are upset, but there's nothing. I got you, to do. I got you. Do you have any struggles running a business? I mean, like, you know, you're you're overseeing what, over ten of your friends and yeah. family. You know what I mean? And I'm sure there's a lot of weight on your shoulders. Uh yeah, like I said, mm. for most of the time, like I said, I have long days. Uh, we might, yeah. you know, get home three or four o'clock in the afternoon, but I'm on my computer sending emails, tr- trying to get, uh, trying to keep us going. Like I said, sure. the, the ball is rolling. The main thing is just to, to keep it rolling. So yeah. Like yeah. I said, uh, I, I do make a lot of cycles. Like I, said, like I told you earlier about my kids. You know, yeah. there's there's times where I, you know, I I have to step back and say, hey, I'm gonna put this away for the day and I'm I gotta spend time with my family. Yeah, but yeah. But for the for the most part, like I said, it does it does take a lot. Um, uh, like I said. From, the, from when we started this, you know, we we were begging for work, you know. Mm. So like I said, it was it was a side hustle, you sure. know. So we were like, oh, you know, we need to make extra money. So we were hoping for yeah, people to yeah. call. Now we've gotten to a point where, you know, I go for I range calls are nonstop, ten to thirty a day. Uh, so like I said, we opened up another number. Okay. Uh, like I said, my mom runs that phone. Okay, gotcha. Uh, so like I said, we there's times that you know, like I said, we get heavy calls just because you know, a lot of dealer, like you said earlier, most people don't. Most people live in these things. Yeah. So when you, you know, you take their camper in, and sometimes it might sit for a little bit wherever they take mm-hmm. it. And, you know, people can't go stay in a hotel and then oh, pay right. their payments or whatever the case may be. Yeah. Okay. I, I see. And that, but that's what makes your business so convenient. Yeah. So like I said, we, yeah. You. And then, like I said, right. the, the good thing is, like I said, once we were able to get tied into the warranty, you know, people love it. You know sure, what I'm saying? Sure. So like I said, why, why take it to my dealer and let it sit for a little bit when you can come to me? I'll I pay your fee. Yeah, for sure. And then I put on, you know, we do it. <laughs> yeah, like I said, most people, most people do. Yeah, I love it too. Anyway, um, that's side note. Um, okay, so were you scared though? Like, get, like quitting? I mean, listen. At the end of the day, a job's a job, and a lot of my guests, like you know, big shout out to a lot of my sponsors. You know, quit their full time yeah. job to be their own boss. To right? be honest, it was it was it was the most scariest experience of my life. To be honest with you, I, okay. My big shout out to my mom. She's been she's always been my cheerleader. You that's know so what I'm great. So, she's been through the fire with yeah, you. Yeah, so she's always yeah. been like, hey, you know, you need, you, need, you need to make the transition. Like I said, we probably made it before when we made the transition. We probably should have did it a year in advance, but we mm-hmm. didn't. You know, like I said, the day that we decided, I went to my job. You know in Cleveland where I worked at and said, Hey, I'm quitting. You know, okay. I said, I can't no longer work. I, you know, but when I took that job, I told them that I had my own business, sure, we sure, were, yeah. we, you know, that we were doing things. There was an understanding. Yeah. And then, like I said, once we got <laughs> to a point where I couldn't do it anymore, we went in and said, Hey, you know, I'm quitting. That's it. And we jumped in, to be honest with you. Uh, there wasn't like a transition. I went from working a full-time job to, you know, within a few hours later, I quit and, and I, you know, I loaded, it. loaded up all my tools and then, Wow. We took off. You know, okay, we gotcha. started the business full time. Did, did you have any regrets at that point? Were you just kind of like, okay, maybe I should go back to To be honest camping. with you, yeah. my, my first year, uh, in, mm. winter, in winter time, like, it, camping seasons, you know, it's hot between, you're probably looking at March to, you know, September, October. That's when it's sure, hot. Sure. Uh, especially if people don't live in them. Uh, you know, they're taking their family out, going camping, things like that. And in winter time, you know, people don't, the people that ain't using them, that are living in them, you know, they put them up for storage. So, you know, the first year that we did it full time, you know, it was hard on winter time. Sure. You know, there was times that we went, you know, a week without work, mm. you know, so it. That's vacation. Yeah. Like I said, it kind yeah. of, uh, it kind of taught me in this business. Like I said, we're pretty much like a contractor. So it taught me right. how to, you know, save my money. Okay. Got uh, you. To where before, man, I, you know, I would blow my money, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I was living, you know, living check to check. Yeah, yeah. So like I said, once I got to where this was and I kind of learned, Hey, you know, my first year getting into it, like, don't get me wrong. We were hot and then it yeah. slowed down and then. Like I said, the the second year and it you know it took off and then ever since then it's, I got it's you. been it's been taking off. Well, that's good. So no regrets. No. The, the going into business for yourself has been the best thing ever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, it, it was a scariest thing, but it was to be honest with you the best the best thing for me yeah. and my family. You know I got you. And you know what? Uh, I, I just love the insight. Of, you know, Blue Star RV Services. I'm so so proud. You know, to know you and to see like just hearing your perspective on things as a business owner. Um, you know, um, you, I, I kind of let's let's backtrack just a few before we go. 
you know, growing up, you were, like you said, defiant. Yeah. You know what I mean? You were doing your own thing. Almost selfish yeah. is what it sounded like. That's, okay? yeah, that's what I was. You were very selfish. Yeah. Now you're like the opposite. Yeah. You give to everything yeah. and everybody. And you are very much, you know, trying to put yourself out there. You're at all the little events. You know, you have floats and stuff like that at the parades for wherever you live yeah. or whatever. And, you know, you, you sponsored things and stuff. When, when did you, how did that change for you? Uh, to be honest and, with and you. And why was that important for you to be that way? Uh, to be honest with you, when I was growing up, man, I didn't, I didn't think I was going to go anywhere. Right. You know what I'm saying? A lot of my family, they've been in the, in the pen. And my brothers, you know, he's locked up in the pen. So, mm. you know, I never thought that I would go anywhere. So once I got the opportunity to where I could give back, yeah, I took it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, like, we sponsored, like I said, my daughter's softball, my son's yeah. football, you know, the public affair, a lot of, a lot of things. Love like I, said, I, I love the opportunity to where... And I'm able to give back because I never thought I would be able to. Yeah. So, like I said, great. once we got there, and like I said, it, it's awesome to give back. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Even if it's just like you said, the parade, throwing out candy. Yeah. Hey, man, look at these kids smiling. You know For what I'm sure. saying? Like I said, my daughter's daycare, uh, we, we did a snow we did a snow cone thing. We had them come out, and like yeah. I said, they gave snow cone to all the kids. Uh, like I said, man, I, 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 we do it because, like I said, I never would have thought that I'd be in the place to where I could. That's good. Yeah. So, like I said, if I, could, if I can now, why shouldn't I? Sure. You know what I'm saying? Um, what do you tell somebody that that's watching this and they're like, you know what, like I want to be like Manny and just quit Man, my. F- do, should they quit their job or should they put their two weeks? Uh, <laughs> well, it just depends. <laughs> I say put your two weeks because it's never good to burn bridges. Did you put your two weeks? No, never. I, didn't. <laughs> I just said the hell with it. And I took off. Oh my god. Yeah. Like I said, if, if if anybody takes anything from this, I think. Uh, I'm happy I put my two weeks. You know, you know I've been to the radio. I, I, had, I, had, to, I had to go back. <laughs> yeah, shout out to Cody. Uh, yeah, hey, hey, he, he's, the only, he's the only reason why I came back. Big shout out yeah. to Cody. Man, he like was said, on the show. I was, I know. Cody Stone, shout out to Cody yeah, Stone. Yeah, man, he, yes. he, I was unrehirable. Like I said, uh, oh, okay. Oh, at the job. I, okay, yeah. yeah. At the job. Yeah. Uh, and a like fun time. You can yeah. say fun time. Everybody knows I work. Well, a yeah, like fun I said, time. Well, I got, I'm at the point now where fucking people come to the job and they know who I am. Like I said, <laughs> man, like I, said I, w- I yeah. wouldn't be here if it wasn't for Fun Town. So a big shout out to them. You know what I'm saying? But Cody Stone, like I said, he gave me the opportunity mm-hmm. to, to go to Cleburne. And like I said, I, I was unrehirable. Sure, sure, sure. And, and he said, hey, man, I, I know him. He, he, he can work. Do you still keep up with him? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, like I said, every chance I get, I start talk to a lot of my good friends that work in Cleburne. Of course, in Waco, like I yeah. said, I know so many people in Waco. For sure. Uh, so like I said, I, I try to talk to them every chance I get. When they have something. when they have issues, uh, man, they, they call me, hey, I got a customer that needs help. And like I said, we'll go out and help. That's you know, what's like up, said, yeah. So, so, we, so we, we try to have still a good business relationship. I got you. Did you watch him on the public photo? Yeah. Did you? I, I, you know what? I loved having him on the show. But he, I, he's a great guy. I cringe on that episode because I was so drunk and extra. I was so drunk. I was. I'm going. I'm going for different now. You know what I mean. I'm going for more substance and less extra. But I, I, when I watch it back, I'm like, uh, kudos to him for yeah. just enduring that. Yeah, he, he, he's, <laughs> he's a, like I said, he's a, he's a great guy. He I've, is known, so awesome. I've known him. Yeah. Like I said, he's he's a good guy. Yes. Well, listen. Okay, Blue Star RV obviously is doing great. You guys are doing yeah. big things. Again, big shout out to you. And I'm so thankful for everything you do for me in the public affair. Truly, it means the world to me. And I, I just love texting you. You're like, of course. Like I'll, re- yeah. you know what I mean. So it's just, it really makes me happy. What's next for you though? I mean. Is this something that you think you're going to retire with? Do you think uh, that your kids might inherit it, or, or uh, eventually, yeah. like I said, we're we're working we're working to get a shop. That that's oh. that's, that's my goal. Like I said, I want to get a shop. To oh, work okay. So we can have an office, uh, have like a home base. Sure. Uh, and then, like I said. I guess I wouldn't want to retire as long as you invite me to all the Christmas parties. Yeah, for sure. Okay, and do any of your are any of your tech single? Um, not right now. I think it right might be. And I'm not talking about Daniel. No, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not talking about him. <laughs> I'm not talking about Daniel. <laughs> I know that. Okay, listen, Manny. Thank you so much for coming on to the. Yeah. Is there anything that you can leave us with? Okay, if you have an RV and you need to get a hold of Manny, how do we get a hold of you? Uh, you can, you know, you can look us up on Facebook or you, you can give us a call at you know two five four two four eight eight zero one four. That's our that's my that's my number. Yeah, don't be sliding in his DMs, case. Stop <laughs> yeah. it. Okay, he's happily. Are you married? Yeah, uh, no, I'm not married, but okay. I got a girlfriend. And got hopefully, a girlfriend. hopefully we get there. Uh, okay. So, but like I said, I do have somebody. Uh, if you need a wedding MC, I'll let you know. But don't be letting more than one person do it with me, please. I, <laughs> Just I, you. Yeah, I'm not doing that shit anymore. I'm <laughs> not doing sorry. that no more. <laughs> Unless it's another experienced MC, but that's it. <laughs> well, Manny, thank you so much for yeah. coming on to the public. No, truly, I appreciate it. Yes, and sir. best of luck to you and everything that you are going on. And I think that I hope that your story inspires people. Yeah, for I, sure. I, I love hearing that you were just like not being mean, but just for lack of a better phrase, just a nothing from nowhere. Yeah. 
that just like, really made a name and for that's, himself. That's what yeah. I really want to say is, yeah. man, no matter where you come from or where you've been, right. it don't stop you from where you're going. You really just control the narrative of your life. Yeah, yeah like I said, you could take yeah. it anywhere. Like, like nobody can you stop you. Been, you could have been like, oh, no, like I didn't have no opportunity, no nothing. Yeah. You could have been a bum. Yeah. You could have still been on drugs, probably yeah. dead. And you know now you're just like your own boss for yeah. that, for Christ's sake. You know what I mean? So good for you, man. I, yeah, I appreciate it. Yes, no, I'm so proud. Thank you to everybody that tuned into this episode of The Public Affair to Manny Guerrero. Thank you so much for, for just being here on the show, just gracing us with your presence. I'm so happy that my viewers can finally see who that guy is that's doing all the giveaways on my public affair page. <laughs> I truly really appreciate it. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe. Now, before we go, you guys, um, and also, please follow Blue Star RV Services on all social media platforms, or on Facebook at the very least. Yeah. And um, Make sure you guys get connected with him if you own an RV, travel trailer, uh, a, a food truck. You yeah. said you do trailers as well. Like, livestock trailers. Livestock. Everything. Okay, I didn't know what that was. Yeah. Livestock trailers. Everything. And, yes, and more. So make sure you guys get connected with him. Um, I've got more of the public affair wave on the wave. Now, before we leave, you did it again. <laughs> I'm going to give a shout out to just a few more of our sponsors of this episode of The Public Affair. This episode is brought to us by Elite Barbershop with Sid Rodriguez, located on Hewitt Drive. You can call the number on the screen to book it, download the Squire app, walk into welcome as well. He has Marcus Guerrero, Chris Reyes, Santos Cordova, David Rodriguez, Isaac Chavez, Clint Fletcher, Isai Reyes, and Sam Ceballos over there, making you look as snackish as I have for more than 190 something episodes of The Public Affair. Oh, and I can't, I can't forget Kyle Berry. That's my boy. Kyle Berry's out there right now, too. Yeah, he's a new barber that they have to so Elite Barbershop. My boy, Sid Rodriguez, thank you for making sure that I look scrumptious for all my episodes of The Public Affair. I truly appreciate it. Of course, the Brothers Roofing and Remodeling with Jesus Sanchez from Mart, Texas, a small construction business from Mart, specializing in general roofing needs and so much more, including all home renovations. Protect your home from the crazy elements of Texas weather with his high quality and affordable work. Follow on Facebook and call them on the screen to Blue Star RV Services. Thank you so much for sponsoring this episode of The Public Affair. Of course, the Hummingbird Party backdrops and decor. My girl, Ana Limones. Listen, call her for all party decor, including beautiful bloom props, giving an extra flair to your party or event. And she also offers a number of wooden backdrops and so much more. And she'll come decorate the party, work overtime to do it and your party's gonna stand out on the block and everybody's gonna know you got an event going on okay so if you have an event going on hit up my girl hummingbird party back shops and decor my girl Ana Limones called it I'm on the screen to book thank you so much for all you do and all your support girl I truly appreciate you and of course the foil box and audio with Jeffrey Monreal home for all your LEDs and auto accessories installation of stereos door speakers and audio systems he also specializes in building custom stuff for enclosures and so much more definitely a jack of all trade he put the tent all over my car he put the, the starlights all over my car he put the, a wireless Apple CarPlay in my car that guy does it all we're one stop shop to get everything done warm you know what you should do you you should get your, your work truck and get some system in it with Blue Star RV well, Services. That, that way we all know Blue Star RV Services is, is you know, pulling up. All right, so Poyo Box and Audio, thank you so much for sponsoring this episode of The Public Affair. To all of you, thank you guys again so much for the, all the love and support that you guys continue to show me to Manny Guerrero. Thank you again for coming on yeah. to the show. Uh, did you. you enjoy the experience? Oh, yeah, it was fun. Thank you. You I weren't shy. It. Oh, no, I wasn't shy. You were in shy. He no. did so good. Go get you a beer. Yeah, I'm going to. I got one in the car already. <laughs> oh, perfect. Okay, get one for me. But don't forget to always keep that between us. Yes. <laughs> Before we get pulled over and shit. <laughs> yeah, we don't need that. I gotta get That was an hour. Down, your truck breaks down, something breaks down, you need it towed. Blue st I said blue star. <laughs> Started over. <laughs> bandas, bandas, bandas. I ain't, I ain't never heard you trip up. I know. What's going on, man? Hold on. Shit. Hold on. I'm good. I'm good. Gotta get a drink. Mm -hmm. We should have bought the fucking beers. <laughs> no, then this would have been a different episode. Right. <laughs> no, we're good. We're good. This has been a Rogue Media Network production.